Beautiful morning, dear children. Welcome back to our social class. Children, so today we are going to start with chapter number two in civics. Okay, urban local self government. So already we have learnt about rural local self government, right? So what do you mean by rural and urban? Rural means villages and urban means towns and cities. Okay, and we learnt about the structure. And about the composition and about the functions of the panchayati raj system in the previous lesson, right? So in this lesson, we'll be learning about the town areas. Shall we start? Yes. What is the name of our lesson? Urban local self government. Okay. So urban means towns and cities. So usually towns and cities will be large in size and a very large number of people live in them. Why? Right? Because we have all the industries here. and the task of providing the civic amenities that means a basic facilities such as electricity drinking water clean and well lit roads is more complicated so more fund will be required for this purpose isn't it therefore the urban local self government are formed according to the size of a town or a city so next we are going to see about the metropolitan cities So, what is the metropolitan area? So, it is an area that has a population of more than ten lakhs, and it consists of a densely populated city. That means what? It is too much populated. Okay. Uh, in other words, we can say it is thickly populated. So, with the surrounding suburbs. So, the metropolitan cities are responsible for the development of a country, and there are many metropolitan cities in India, like Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata, Chennai, Bengaluru, and Hyderabad. Are a few of them listed? Okay. So, what is the municipal corporation? So, it is a local self-governing body of a city that has a population of more than. Ten lakhs, and it is an elected body. That means we people elect our candidates. Okay, so all residents of eighteen years of age and above can vote, and anyone above the age of twenty-one years can contest elections. That means they can stand in the election. Yes. What is the composition of this municipal corporation? The number of members depends upon the population of a city, and the elected members are called councillors. Okay, and the members elect the head, and the head is called as a mayor or the mahapar, and a deputy mayor is also elected to take charge in mayor's absence. So we have a class leader and assistant leader. Assistant leader, class leader is absent. Who will take in charge? The assistant leader. Likewise, if here. The mayor is not that a deputy mayor will be taking in charge. Okay, and seats are reserved for people belonging to scheduled caste and the scheduled tribes, and always seats are also reserved for women. And the members of the state legislature, Vidhan Sabha, and Vidhan Parishad, and the members of the Parliament, Lok Sabha, and the Rajya Sabha are elected from an area. And some seats may be filled by the nominated persons who have the special knowledge of or the experience in municipal administration. So such person they are called as aldermen. Okay, so they will have been in that place for more than not twenty, thirty to thirty-five years. Okay, so see they can uh, nominate person. They will be asking them to vote for them. Okay, such persons are called home children, aldermen. Okay, and the state government appoints a chief executive officer, CEO, known as the municipal commissioner. So she or he sees to that, or the decisions made by the corporation are executed. Okay, and the chief executive officer also acts as a link between the state government and the municipal corporation, and various officers in charge of the Department of Health, Education, Sanitation, and so on help her or him in the work. So it is elected for a term of five years. The municipal corporation is elected for term of how many years? Five years, and it can be dissolved earlier if it does not function properly. So in such cases, what will happen? New members have to be elected within six months so that the term can be completed. Okay. So what are the functions of this municipal corporation? So it performs both the compulsory and the optional functions. 
So what are the compulsory functions? Yes, to arrange for the collection and disposal of garbage, to maintain the drainage system for clear surroundings, to set up hospitals and dispensaries and to arrange for vaccination to prevent the spread of diseases such as smallpox, cholera, tuberculosis and hepatitis and to prevent adulteration of food and other consumer goods and to set up and maintain public toilets and urinals and to provide fresh and clean drinking water, electricity and proper lightning facilities for the streets okay and to maintain record of birth and death and issue certificates for the same and to set up and maintain graveyards cremation grounds and electric crematoriums and to establish school and adult education centers and to construct maintain and repair roads and bridges within city limits and what are the optional functions yes to maintain fire engines museums public parks and public libraries and to build night shelters, orphanages and old age homes and to provide for a cheap and efficient public transport system. So we are having you no know, free pass for going in the bus. Students are having isn't it and old age people also they have free pass and to organize cultural events such as sports, exhibitions and so on. So we'll be having some exhibitions and cultural events uh, near our beach. Have you seen? Yes. These are all the functions of the municipal corporation. So, a municipality is a local self-governing body in a smaller town and city. So, it is an elected body and all residents of a city who are citizens of India and 18 years of age or above can vote in the municipal elections. Okay. And anyone above the age, as I told you, whatever we have read for the municipal corporation, the same rule follows here. So, anyone above the age of 21 can contest in the election and the population of a city determines the number of members and um, seats are reserved for women and people belonging to scheduled caste and scheduled tribes and the members of the state legislature, the members of the parliament are elected from an area from a uh, from former part of the municipality and people having special knowledge of experience in municipal administration are also nominated here and a municipality is elected for a term of five years and municipalities meet at regular intervals and the members elect a chairperson who presides over the meetings and a vice chairperson is elected to take charge in his or her absence like in the municipal corporation we learned about Yes, the deputy mayor, isn't it? So, here it is the vice chairperson. So, a municipality performs the same functions as the municipal corporation. So, what are the sources of income of the municipal bodies? Yes, taxes on goods coming into the city is known as octroi. Okay, and the taxes on houses and land called property taxes collected and taxes on business and professions are done and taxes collected on water public lighting and hygiene facilities and vehicle tax on motorized vehicles and toll tax for the use of roads and bridges these are all collected by our municipalities okay and education tax for the educational activities entertainment tax from cinema halls theaters and circus and rent from buildings owned by the municipal corporation and fees for issuing birth and death certificates and annual grants from the state government so from all these sources only we can the income in the municipal bodies so next one we have the nagar panchayat so a nagar panchayat is set up for a transitional area that is an area in transition from the rural to urban transition means you are transform transforming the rural area to a urban area so the nagar panchayat looks after the civic that is the basic amenities and the administration of this transitional area they are called as what nagar panchayats so next we have the supervision of the urban local self-governing bodies. So the municipal corporations and the municipalities function under the supervision of the central and both the state governments. So if the government is not satisfied with the way the local self-governing bodies are working, what will happen? Yes, immediately they will be taking action and we must cooperate with the urban local bodies and be involved in the activities concerned with the maintenance of towns and cities. Importantly, first our street. Okay, so we have to obey the rules by our government. So, what are the main things which we learned in this lesson about the municipal corporation? First, we learned about what is the metropolitan area. Then, we learned about the composition of the 
municipal corporation then municipal council and last we learnt about the nagar panchayats and to end with we learnt who supervises the urban local self governing bodies okay so children write your class work neatly prepare well for your monthly test okay thank you children have a great day